the Father in heaven, I thank you for this evening, for the opportunity to hear from your word. Please will you help us to understand by your Holy Spirit and lead Pastor Mar Marjorie in bringing the word of truth to us. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Paro. And welcome, everybody, wherever you are watching us from. Welcome, everybody, on the Zoom meeting. Everyone watching us online, welcome to Kingdom Embassy Budapest. It's always a joy in the presence of the Lord. At his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. So before we start, a couple of lovely announcements for me. Actually, just one, not a couple. Just one announcement and, oh, it's disappeared. Where is it? Oh, it's here. Power School of Miracles is coming up. Power School of Miracles is coming up and it's going to be on January 17th. Is it? Yes, January 17th to the 23rd. Yeah, there it is on the screen. Can you guys see it on the screen? Yes, we can. Yes, January 17th to 23rd. 2022 so please do register at the earliest please register at the earliest it's going to be an outstanding it's going to be a marvelous it's going to be an extremely extremely breathtaking experience for you and even for everybody who's going to be returning it's always something new it's never the same it's always a different experience because remember we are transcending we are moving forward it's never the same and we are in a new season. All things have changed now and all things have been made beautiful. And we're going to rediscover Eden, which is going to be the thing, rediscovering Eden. What was accorded to us at the time and Eden. So we're going to be looking at that. So please do join us. We'd love to see you there physically. And if not, you can always join us online as well. All right. Okay. So today we have a very exciting topic, which I really, really, really love it because I've always lived by this. Amen. So we'll be talking about excellence and protocol in the kingdom of God. We're talking about excellence and protocol in the kingdom of God. So, okay, let me just confirm. We don't have any Hungarian speakers, so there's no need for translation. Right, Reka? Yes, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, it seems like it's only uh, English speakers today. Okay, fantastic. We'll just go ahead. You can just it. flow. You can just take it away. Yeah, you can just flow. Yeah, okay, fantastic. We'll go like that. Not a problem. So, and our opening scripture today will be the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 1. Psalms, chapter 8, verse 1, please. Psalms 8 verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Amen. Amen. How excellent is our God in all the earth. In the entire earth, God is excellent. So I looked into the description of excellent in the, in the dictionary and it says extremely good, outstanding. Basically something which is very good, superb and outstanding. So as God is, so are we, because our Heavenly Father is outstanding. We equally are outstanding. And that's why Jesus came on earth, yes, to redeem us and to reconcile back to God. Yes, that's what we always know, but also so that we can know who God is, so that we can equally be as well like that. Because remember this, daily we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we are being renewed to be more and more like Jesus every day. So when you read the word, you are reading about God. You are beholding the sun. And remember, you become what you behold. Amen. Psalms chapter 16, verse 3, please. Psalm 16, 3. Psalm 16, 3. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Amen. Amen. The excellent ones are the delight of the Father. This actually says in the other translation, I believe it's um, the Amplified translation. So you are an excellent breed that God is raising to another dimension. You see, there's two categories of people in the kingdom. There's the saints and there's the excellent ones. The excellent ones who are the special forces. So the special forces are the ones that execute God's will. 
and purpose on this earth and bring in tangible results. Remember this, you cannot walk into excellence without knowledge. Let us have a look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. Proverbs 17, 27. He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Amen. Amen. A man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Remember, like I've just said, you cannot walk in excellence without understanding, and God is excellent in his work, and those that are excellent and love him will equally be excellent in everything that we do. Because if we tell the world that, yes, I am born of God, and God is my father, and there's a statement that says the apple does not fall far from the tree. So you cannot leave anything different from who your father is. And excellence does just not actually stop in doing the work of God, in being in the house of God, in ministry. No, for example, with your friends, if your friends invite you to their place for, for dinner or invite you even just for a coffee, how do you turn up? How do you look like? Do you make an effort in your appearance? Because remember, you have only one chance for first impression. So how do you look like? How do you turn up looking like? At work, are you always on time at work? Or for meetings, do you turn up for meetings at work 10 or 15 minutes before? Or do you come when your boss is already speaking and they're getting into probably the second phase of the meeting? Do you keep time? All these little bits and bobs are part of our excellence how we present ourselves, because when we are before people, human beings naturally are always observing us. You'd be so surprised that how people actually are observing you when you know, whatever it is that you're doing, especially as being, if, if you're, if you're in, in, the, in the church and you're in the, in the leadership particularly, you are actually on the spotlight quite a lot, even just as a regular church goer, you are actually on the spotlight. So how do you present yourself? Do you make an effort? How do you turn up? Do you make a little, little effort in your dress code, in your, in your hair? Just those little things. Do you represent the father well in the church? What do you do in the church? Do you come in and just sit at the back and just lounge? Or do you present yourself like you're in a proper meeting that you are actually being paid for at work? Do you, are you always loving and caring to the person that you don't know that's coming into the church for a first time? Do you welcome them with a smile? Do you get to know them? Are you warm to them? Are you, do you start ministering love to them right there when you're talking to them? For example, when you're doing your grocery runs, how do you get out of your house? Who you, because you know what? I live by one policy of you have to stay ready. You have to stay ready. The same way God's blessings will always come to you at any time and you have to be ready to receive them. It's the same way you need to be ready to do what God has called you to do. Remember, we are the excellent ones, the special forces. So are we always ready to minister love to hearting? Well, for example, if you're doing your grocery runs and you see someone who is who needs to be ministered healing to, and you approach them and you start talking to them about Jesus as the healer, do you look representing Jesus enough or are they going to start doubting you by your appearance? Those little small details actually make a difference. So when operating in accidents, we are involved in what we are called to do. Focus, we are too focused on the mission that we don't get diverted with any other little things. We don't do that. Let's just read um, the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 29. Isaiah 28, 29. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Amen. Amen. So basically, we do what we do because we care. We're not just doing it just for the sake of just doing it and getting by. No, we do what we do because we care. Highlight your actions. Let what you do stand out with excellence. Be like Daniel. Don't just fit in, stand out. Let whatever it is, every place that you show up to, leave it better than you found it. Let whatever, even how you speak to someone, even how you interact with them, make a difference. Stand out, don't just fit in. Just because everybody else is doing everything the same. No, remember you're not everybody else. You are a creature, a different creature created in Christ Jesus. Amen. Daniel chapter six, verse three. The 
Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because of the excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to set in him over the whole realm. Amen. Amen. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because of an excellent spirit. Remember, God is a spirit and, the, and, and we are his flesh. So when, as long as God lives in us, as he is, so are we. So we have an excellent spirit as well. So you see, like for Daniel, said, then this Daniel distinguished himself about the governors and satraps because of an excellent spirit was in him. You have the excellent spirit as well. So, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole ring. Why did the king just decide? He just didn't decide this to do this overnight on one time because he, he's probably been observing. Remember this. There's always someone who is always watching what we are doing. Like I said earlier, someone is always observing. Some, and you can be presented before greatness and you do not know. So excellence, is, it just cannot be acquired overnight. Success cannot be acquired overnight. It's in our daily routine. It's a habit. What do you do constantly? And the same has to be with, you have to be constantly excellent because excellence will draw greatness to you. You see, like for Daniel, the king got, gave thought to setting him over the whole ring because they knew they can trust him. They knew, and because this is the king, remember, so the king definitely have a lot of opulence and wealth. They need to be represented well. And they trusted that Daniel can actually do that, amen? Because there's always a better version of you whenever you are operating in excellence. So say no to mediocrity. Do not allow mediocrity in your life at any cost, no matter what it is. Say no to mediocrity, because if you play around with mediocrity and accept mediocrity, then success is going to be a rumor to you. You will never get near to it because you're playing around with mediocrity, amen? So the way of excellence is love. People that love, what they do are excellent and love is the highlight of excellence. I'll repeat that again. People that love what they do are excellent because love is the highlight of excellence because they are putting every single detail, every single thought in what they're doing because it's not about only about them. It's like, let's say, for example, when you're sitting in the presence of your colleagues, your subordinates, or, or even in the ministry, how are those people seeing you? How are you presenting yourself? What do you want to be remembered for? Amen. Let us look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. Philippians 1, 10. Did I write it correctly? Yes. Philippians 1, 10. That you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Amen. Amen. That you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. This offense here is being talked about when we are sincere to people, let's say, for example, in the leadership, we have to be sincere to people and correct them with love. You see, the excellent ones, regardless of what sphere of authority, regardless of what rank you are, the excellent ones welcome correction because they take it as a way for them to develop and become better. The only competition we have is the version of yourself, which was yesterday. So every day is supposed to be different from who you are the previous day. So correction is welcome because it helps them to advance. It helps them to enhance what they are called to do because ex excellence demands an excellent gift. It has to be excellent throughout. And so you have to give your best, give your best, not just the rest of what I have give your best, shine, stand out, make sure that whatever it is you're doing is actually representing your father. Our opening base scripture clearly says how excellent is our God in all the earth. We are God's representatives here on earth. So wherever we are going into the world, we are actually interpreting God to the world. So how are we live streaming him? As Apostle Charlton always said, how are we live streaming God to the world? Are we excellent or are we mediocre? And I can tell you for sure, uh, God is not a mediocre God, not at all. Amen. So I'm going to give you a couple of key, how many takeaways are this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six key takeaways about the excellent ones. So write this down. The excellent ones are the ones that get the results the Father wants. Because the excellent ones are the delight of the Father. We get the results that the Father wants. And how do we do that? Because we know the will of the Father. 
we are one with him as he's one with Jesus and Jesus is in us and we're all seated in the heavenly places with him. So we know what results are expected. Amen. Point number two, the excellent ones do not debate, they execute. I'll say that again. The excellent ones do not debate, they execute. We are special forces. We don't debate, we execute. If anything, because we, are, we always work in teams as special forces, if there's anything or, or even a discrepancy in, um, in opinions or maybe something like that, we find the best solution and execute. There's no debating in there because we want to know one thing. And remember this, nobody is better than anybody else. When God looks at us, he looks at each and every one of us as a born again child of God. He looks at us because one price was paid for all of us, the blood of Jesus. So he looks at us through the blood of Jesus. So whichever teams you are working in, remember to look at your, the people you are working in and whatever family you're in, look at them with the eyes of God. Look at them with the eyes of God because as he is, so are you. He lives inside of you and this is what is expected of you. Amen. Point number three, the excellent ones are the ones that realize they are the righteousness of God. The excellent ones are the ones that realize they are the righteousness of God. Righteousness, we cannot work for it. It's already been given to us as a free gift. Mom taught a very lovely message last Sunday about divas and being divine. Absolutely beautiful message. The excellent ones, so I'm going to coin this with mom's message last Sunday. The excellent ones are divine because we have we serve a divine God, we have a divine being, we have divine presence in us, and they're not divas. Divas have want all their attention on themselves and think everything is all by their strength. No, we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. We are the divine of the Lord. Amen. Point number is it five or three? Four. Okay. The excellent ones are called lovers of God. Because God is love, we love him as well. Because love radiates in us. And we are ministering love to heart well because love radiates in us and through us. Because it's already this is part of our DNA. God is love. And so we us being lovers of God, we love him because he has taught us to love him as well. Because he first loved us and demonstrated his love. There's no way better I can explain how God demonstrated his love than on Calvary. That is pure demonstration of love when Jesus went there because he wanted to redeem us and bring us back to him. Amen. Last point, number five, the excellent ones are the ones that are walking in understanding. As we have read it previously in the, in the book of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27, because you are excellent and you are walking in understanding. Amen. So now we get to into the second bit of our teaching today, which is protocol. Protocol. Something which is very much overlooked in the kingdom of God is protocol. Because everybody has a gift, everybody has talent, everybody has mentors, everybody has tutors. We come into the presence in the church, we are all together, but protocol is always, always overlooked. But the sad thing is in the marketplace, protocol is followed without a problem, without a reason. Why? Because the mindset at the back of the head, someone is thinking, okay, I'm being paid. So I have, I cannot suffer to lose my job. So there's protocol in here. But what about in the kingdom of God? Protocol is very important as well. So in the kingdom of God, he has placed us under tutors and governors who are going to train us, guide us, empower us, lead us and all this. Let us look at Galatians chapter four, verses one to two. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Amen. Amen. The heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave. Basically, a child here means that you have not navigated from the seasons of the world because ch ch childhood is not co considered by how old you are in the kingdom no it is not by chronological age it is have you navigated through the seasons of the world and put away the childish things to think that it's all about you have you stopped wearing your heart on the sleeves 
Have you started making decisions which at the end result is for you are the excellent of the Father and his delight to get the godly results, amen? So it is now our responsibility to honor the guardians and tutors that we are placed under. Because let's look at honor. What is honor? Honor is our willingness to reward somebody for the distinct difference that we notice in them. So when we are placed under tutors and, and, and guardians in the kingdom, we need to honor the difference that they have because they have a distinct difference. There's a distinct difference between them because they've been probably in the ministry a little bit longer than us. So we need to honor that. And because honor is a choice and it's one of the most important laws of the earth. You have to constantly make a choice to honor the person because definitely when you're presented before great men and women of God, people who have gone ahead before you, people who have actually solved problems which you're yet to solve, there is a difference you're going to notice in them. So let us look at Ephesians 6, 1 to verses 1 to 3. Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Amen. Amen. That it may be well with you and you may live long in the earth. I'll just uh, read that verse again. Verse 6, yeah scrambling through it yeah honor your father and mother see honor is being emphasized here you see you cannot and father or um, you cannot displace anyone's mother or father which is right but who are our, our parents in christ i like to read it in the amplified version i believe i, I read it very differently in the amplified version yes and it says children obey your parents in the lord that is accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives because our parents are, are are his representatives for this is right for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline verse two honor esteem value as precious your father and mother and be respectful to them this is the first commandment with a promise Remember, first commandment with a promise. And what is the promise? So that it may be well with you and that you may have long life on the earth. Because you can be living a long life on the earth, but it's not going well with you. You are not fruitful. You are just going around around cycles, but you have long life. But as the word of God says here, honor your parent, honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. Being around great people is not a guarantee that you can become successful. Applying the law of honor is what can actually help you through that. Because in every season in your life, you have to plant the seed of honor and you will be rewarded for it. And in every season of your life, whenever you get to, God always divinely places someone who's going to walk you through that season to your next. That is standard. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Second Corinthians. Verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter four verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Amen. We have treasure in the earthen vessels. God often disguises greatness in people. Because you know what, unfortunately, we know that people know how to pretend very well when they see someone showing up right in front of them and they know that this person is a great person. God always disguises greatness in people. So when you show up in the scene and you are before great men and women of God and people who are going to be impactful in your life, not only necessarily people from the kingdom in, in, in a church concept, but you have to recognize them by their spirit. You have to discern and recognize them by their spirit. Honor them, respect them. Because with honor comes protocol as well, as I mentioned earlier. So do not get too familiar when you're in the presence of great people, when you're in the presence of kings, when you're great in, in the presence of your mentors, your tutors and your gardeners. Do not get too familiar. They will receive you very well. They will be smiling. They will be welcoming. Why? Because they know the concept of if you want to build well, you have to build with love. 
because love is the glue that brings unity. And where there's unity, there's power. And where there's power, there's growth. And people normally flourish really well and do really, really well in an environment where there's love. Because unless it's, whenever there's people who have power and there's no love, it's the most dangerous thing. So if you want to know the right people of greatness, the right people God has put before you, they have power, but they have love as well. Because power minus love, it cannot happen. Amen. John chapter 12, verse 20 to 22. John 12, 20 to 22, please. John 12, 20 to 22. Now there is now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from the side of Galilee, and asked him, Sir, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and Andrew in turn, sorry, Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, here we can clearly see the protocol. These Greeks who came to worship at the feast, they wanted to see Jesus. But Jesus was loving. He ministered love everywhere he went. He was friendly, he was joyful, he would eat with his disciples, he would smile all the time. But these Greeks did not just run off to him and say, hey, I want to have a word with you because he's smiling and he's friendly. No, they went to the protocol. You see, they came to Philip, who was from the side of Galilee, and asked him, saying, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Still yet, Philip did not just run off to Jesus and say, hey, there's a couple of people here who want to speak to you. No, Philip came and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip then in turn told Jesus. So you see, there's a protocol on how you access this greatness which has been accorded unto you because there is, they knew that this is a great person. This, this greatness right here. So they, the son, they knew him by the spirit. And so they went to the right protocol that shows respect, that shows honor. Amen. Write this down. Honor promotes and honor will give you access. Honor promotes and honor will give you access. But this honor will ultimately disqualify you. For example, if you jump over protocol, that is dishonor, and ultimately you will be disqualified. You will be disqualified and access will be withdrawn out of you. And once access to greatness has been withdrawn out of you, this is actually where you will start struggling in life. Because if you look at it, as Apostle Charles has always said, almost every sin on the earth is a sin of dishonor. It started with dishonor at one point. So how you treat greatness where you are, no matter what it is, even for us, like for example, even matter if we've been in the ministry for the longest time, we've been around our spiritual parents for the longest time, we still have to respect them and honor them. Just because we've been around them for the longest time does not mean now we start crossing over the protocol because we there. No, that honor and respect still stand. It still stands because the people who are coming in afterwards, they are watching as well how we are dealing and how we are respecting our, our spiritual parents, for example, in the church or even at home in our own other biological families, how we are interacting with our parents there. So if there's anyone visiting, they will see how the honor is being done. So if we cross these protocols and not and start focusing on very slim, flimsy things, no, it doesn't work like that. Amen. So the six points about honor, I'd like us to write down, please. Six points about honor. So point number one, honor is a decision, a seed and a law. Honor is a decision, a seed and a law. It's a decision you make. And when honor, it's a seed you are planting as well for yourself. Remember what I said earlier on, every season that you come into life, a new season, you're going to be presented before greatness because your life has really changed. And are you going to sow a seed of honor which is going to constantly grant you access to greatness and for you to constantly grow? So sow the right seed of honor. Point number two, honor will bring blessings to your life. We have seen this in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. I'll repeat that again, point number two. Honor will bring blessings to your life. Children, honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. This is your blessings from your parents. Amen. Point number three. Where there is honor, there will be riches and influence. 
Where there is honor, there will be riches and influence. Point number four, honor will remove pain in your life. Honor will remove pain in your life. As I mentioned earlier, just a, a few minutes ago, most, if not all, of the sin on this earth is the sin of dishonor. So if you dishonor and then you're disconnected from greatness, and then you're disconnected from stewardship, disconnected from guardianship, you might end up suffering a lot of pain without guidance because nobody walks on this earth without guidance, without a tutor, without a mentor. It cannot happen. And that is why God in his sovereignty has identified the right people that he places us under them so that we can benefit and have the riches and influence of this earth. Amen. Point number four. Sorry, point number five. Sorry. Honor will bring satisfaction in the day of famine. Honor will bring satisfaction in the day of family. Basically, you will have access to what others don't have. Case in point, Joseph. Joseph, he was the same when he was in the pit, when he was the parent, when he was the pit before he went to the palace. He always honored the people around him and he was recognized for his honor. And during the famine, he had access to what other people did not have. Number six, honor is the key to growing the church, the business, or anything. Honor is the key to growing the church, the business, or anything. And that's why in, in this family, we operate with the culture of honor. That is our culture, culture of honor. We honor our spiritual parents. We honor each other. We work around together, but we honor each other regardless of who joined the ministry first, who joined the ministry last, who joined the ministry in the middle. You know, we don't look at each other as this person is different from this person. No, we honor each other for our differences and the diversity. Because every joint supplies, everybody has got something they are bringing onto the table. Everybody has, it's like the whole body, the eye cannot do what the leg is doing. It cannot. For example, if I can challenge you right now to try walking on your elbows for even just five minutes, it's not going to happen. So everybody has something that they bring into the table and we recognize this. Our parents, our spiritual parents have trained us and have taught this to us. That we have, everybody has something to bring in and that is why everybody is placed somewhere else to do something because of the greatness that they have recognized in us and they help us to bring it out with love. You know, this goes to love. And that's why in turn, we love them back and we respect them back and respect the protocols around them. So that everybody else who's coming in, joining the family, they can see that and they follow suit. So it all starts with us and the back stops with us because we honor our parents, we love our parents, we operate on the protocol because we are all the excellent ones who are the delight of the Father. Amen. I trust you've been blessed by the word. And please do listen to this message again and again because it's a very, very important topic. And we'll be covering this topic in the next few weeks as well. We'll be going more and more in it. I think even into sometime into December, we'll see. But because it's a topic that really, really needs to be shared and repeated. Sometimes it's good to repeat things because it sticks more in the head and you get a better understanding to it. Amen. And so I will hand Absolutely. over to you, Princess Reka. Thank you so much, Pastor. We have been so blessed. And in the meantime, uh, uh, Anna from Denmark has joined us. Welcome. You want to unmute yourself? If I want to... Oh, oh that's right. Now we can hear you. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, welcome. So, yeah, as I said, uh, it's a reoccurring meeting, so the link is always going to be the same. So, yes. Okay, yes, um, uh, we can all unmute ourselves and just, oh, lovely, so we can see you. So we can discuss what we have heard, and I think it's a good thing because we all um, supply each other with our unique perspective on the message and how it speaks to us. Uh, sadly, those who need it the most are not present at this point, but uh, hopefully they will listen to it later on. And uh, I know that in some countries, I have uh, realized that in some countries, uh, protocol is more present than in other countries. That is to say that in some countries, protocol is not really observed, <laughs> which is why we need to talk about it even more, you know? Like in Europe, Absolutely. for instance, 
it seems like we don't have protocols so much in place, especially in churches, as opposed to the continent of Africa, for instance. And I'm have I I must say I have been very much very blessed, of course, to be mentored and pastored and uh, uh, just all in all trained by Apostle who is who, who is also from Africa, and uh, by nature and just by the way he is naturally he brought brought with him the uh, this whole aspect of protocol which was absolutely new to me many years ago that that we have met. So he trained me thoroughly in that, but I know <clears throat> I can understand and appreciate that in some countries, protocol is not present at all because it seems like people try to be more friends with each other and being and emphasizing that they are on the same basis and on the same level. And that seems to be mostly what's being you know, promoted but that's not the kingdom culture and we regardless of where we live we are representing the kingdom and heaven is a culture of honor and kingdom is a culture of honor and that's what we are bringing into it's not a, a, an aspect of an african culture but it is a culture of heaven right? so that's what some of the christians who who are new to this whole aspect of protocol need to understand that we are not trying to push our culture to them, but we are, are promoting the culture of heaven. And when they get to heaven, they will realize that they, it, it's all about honor. People there honor each other, regardless of where people come from. It's just like you honoring the person, you honoring Jesus in the person. And just as Pastor Marjorie has pointed out very well, that we also honor each other by the way we present each other. Like, um, uh, I have noticed that some people, when they attend to uh, meetings online, perhaps they don't really take care of their, you know, their appearance. They don't really use makeup. They don't really use, you know, any kind of uh, accessories or whatever. And it's all good and well, but they need to understand that they represent the heaven that they come from. And they also represent the church they represent they coming from and the ministry they coming from and ultimately they of course represent themselves so each of us don't roll out of the bed as uh, pastor marjorie and i discussed earlier this week on the telephone we don't we don't roll out of bed you know with makeup and the perfect hair and all but all these things are aspects of our our appreciation to show to the viewers and to each other and it's not a worldly thing, but it's rather an honor thing. So the way you present yourself, as Pastor Marjorie just said, is the way people will receive you. And you don't have too many first chances. <laughs> In fact, first chances by default is one by nature. And uh, mm -hmm. you will have one chance to make the first impression. And it, once you make that first impression for better or for worse, it's very, very hard to turn this around in the minds of people. Because we all tend to uh, subconsciously judge each other by our appearance. So even before you utter the first word that may be good or bad, people immediately have a mental picture about you. That, of, of course, evokes an emotional reaction in them subconsciously within the, next, within the first 10 seconds, probably, even before you even get to talk. And that will either open them for whatever you want to say or will close them subconsciously. So that's why it's so important to present yourself the way you want to be perceived. Many people are um, uh, uh, demanding respect. Well, you cannot demand respect. You earn respect. And one of the ways you earn respect is the way you present yourself. Because if you don't respect yourself to present yourself properly, then how do you expect others to respect you? Does it make sense? So it's one of the things yeah. that we teach that it's so important to, to pay attention to even the little details, you know, your background, your, you know, your makeup, if you're, if you're a female, uh, you know. And one of the things that we say that sometimes people tend to overlook this because they, especially Christians, because they think this is something worldly. Well, it's not something worldly. In fact, it's very much heavenly. Jesus always looks perfect. I'm absolutely sure. And even today, he always, whenever he appears or any of his angels, they always look perfect. They are not wrinkled clothes or, you know, 
unkempt or hair all over the place. But when you present yourself in such a way, people will misjudge you. You know, not everybody is mature enough to look through all that facade and say, you know what, that person may be just having a bad day. They immediately write you off. And that's not a good start. It's not a good start. Whether you are going to, for a job interview or, you know, especially if you are on television or nowadays, of course, everyone's on um, social sites, social media, um, daily, in fact. And, you know, it's just important. These things are important. You think they are minuscule and nuances, but all these little details will really make up the big picture that the people have about, about you. And that will very much determine whether they will trust you or not, whether they will invite you to certain events or they will not, whether they invite you to teach them or not. You can't expect someone who looks uncapped to teach on excellence. I mean, that would be just absolutely not, you know? So, you know, things like that. Amen. But then we all learn and, uh, you know, not everybody has perhaps the finesse for that when they were born because they come from a very different background, very different uh, family or even social, you know, situation. But we can all learn and we can all, all evolve. And so yes. I learn daily and I make it a point to learn daily. Uh, just the other day, I was asking Pastor Marjorie to look up, uh, to let me know what setup she's using with her uh, uh, Zoom because she always looks perfect. <laughs> And I really admire that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's just the perfect lies, the perfect makeup. Whether it's two o'clock in the morning, I absolutely admire her. And I, I so much admire that she puts all this effort into these details because she understands how important it is. So, of course, I ask her, please teach us an excellence and protocol because I can see by your appearance and by the way you talk and teach and the way you present yourself, that you definitely know about excellence. You definitely know, understand very deeply protocol. So of course, she would be the first one I would ask to see and, uh, on, on this subject, definitely. And also she's always very much on time, which I have to learn. <laughs> we are all evolving. Actually on time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm being very real, I'm very being very real. Yeah. You know, it's just to be honest. But um, yeah, I mean, each aspect we can all learn from each other. So, Anybody would like to add something to it? I'm yielding the floor to anybody. Yes, like you say, I mean, uh, we, we, we all learn from each other regardless of whatever it is. And um, just going back to the protocol and the consistency in the excellence, you know, a lot of times you find that this disappears, especially if people have been, I'm talking about in, 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 the, in, the, in the ministry, if people have been in the ministry for a longer time, but there's something I've noticed within yourself, with Orin, with Pastor Lori, you guys are consistent with your excellence. It's not, it's, it's never well, been lost. We have been trained by the best. We have been trained by the best. Yeah, it's never been lost in there. So you see, that's all it's right. We are wonderful, wonderful men of God who is always consistent and who always emphasizing how important consistency is. And it's a wonderful thing that coming from a European culture, very different background, I really had to adjust to his mindset, to his heavenly, uh, you know, uh, view of things. And one of the very big parts of it, as you just mentioned, Pastor, was the aspect of protocol, because I was not taught that or wasn't taught it in the church. And, uh, you know, as you said, it was, it was kind of lost in translation for some, you know, for some reason. And people were almost trying to be on the same level with the pastor. And, and also, it's, you know, in some, some, some places, especially in Europe, I must say, you know, I, I have to localize it because really coming from Europe, this is something I have noticed that even the pastors are trying to be on the same level with the people where they are not. And they need to own it. They are not on the same level. In fact, they are, the Bible says that they are in charge of our souls. So that immediately puts them on the pedestal, and which is a good thing, because we need people to look up to. We need leaders. We don't need friends in church in terms of, you know, when you need a leader, you don't want a friend. A friend is on the same level by definition, but a leader is above you. And we don't really nurture equal relationships, like horizontal relationships. We have people, we have relationships who are, who are, you know, who are above us that help us 
and we have relationships that we help, so they are by definition under us. But yes. the relationships like this are not really so much in heaven, if you think about it. Jesus wasn't on this level with anybody when he was here. Mm -hmm. He had people he helped too, and he had people, I mean, he had God, of course, uh, who helped him. But uh, I think that's a good model. And we need to own that, you know. Horizontal relationships are not helping. They're not helping. Unfortunately, they're not, not at all. And I like the concept of how you describe that because you see, you much better hope of having more mentors than people on the same level. Yes, once in a while you can't be around them, but you have to have more that, of the mentors and the proteges who are below you with the learning. Once in a while you can sit down, but even when you're just sitting on the people at the same level as you are, there's really nothing you're learning there. With exchanging really, experiences, I, and I understand that, but really, yeah. in terms of moving forward, these yeah. are not the, not the relationships that help you move forward. The ones who are fooling you are the ones who are above you, and the ones you are fooling are the ones, by definition, below you. And that, right. that is something, an aspect that we don't have very much in Europe. <laughs> we don't really have that, especially in churches. Everybody seems to be, they want to be friends, friends, friends. But that's not really what moves us forward, is it? Unfortunately, it, it doesn't work. Leadership and friendship don't don't go together. Unfortunately, no. yeah, and I th this I, I can attest to it because you know when you say you've tried, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. That was me. Like about fifteen years ago, when I initially became a supervisor in the company that I was working for, I thought, okay, well, this I'm, of course I, I'm their leader, and you were friends and hanging out, and it's, I can tell you one day it went horribly wrong and I learned it that moment leadership and friendship it, it doesn't work it doesn't yeah. work at all yeah it doesn't work a lot yeah so th and that is why whenever God elevates you to a different level you have to constantly transform and renew your mind to that level because a new yeah. you is, is required on that level the person you are on the previous yeah, level so. stops see seizing ceases to exist so when you go forward to that other level a new you starts existing so you need to transform yourself and accustom yourself to that to that level where you are true as apostle often says that not everyone not everyone qualifies for your next season so what i have experienced is when god um would, when god elevates me to my next season i often find myself my whole surrounding changing Sometimes even the country is changing. <laughs> I have to move to a country, which happens often. And, uh, and of course, my whole surrounding changes and my whole circle of friends changes. That doesn't mean that I cut people off necessarily. It's just, Absolutely. they don't really, not everybody can stand. It's like when you are moving up on a mountain, not everybody can breathe on that level because yeah. the air around you changes as you get higher. And not everybody is able to breathe the same air. And that's a good, ex a good, that's a good example because uh, I find that to be very true in my life, that not every friend, like especially old friends or childhood friends, precisely because of this protocol thing and because of this excellence thing, if they don't walk in the same excellence, they will not understand what you're doing and therefore they cannot even support it. And sometimes they can even try to pull you back. Oh, we know you from your childhood. Well, you don't know because my childhood was decades ago. <laughs> and if you're still yeah. standing there, you, know, you are the one who is not moving, you know. We need to evolve and we need to evolve daily. And not everybody wants to uh, evolve. And um, I've just seen one of the, um, one of, um, it's a great um, uh, leadership card. I, I try to find, I find it on the internet. And uh, someone actually sent it to me. And it says, uh, when you ask, the first picture says, who, who wants change? Everybody puts their hands up. Second question of the same leader, who wants to change? Nobody puts their hands up. Isn't that so? <laughs> change is yeah. everybody wants. When it comes to you and you have to actually personalize it, nobody wants to change. So, but when you're moving up, by definition, you are changing because your environment changes. The air around you changes. The scenery changes. And many don't qualify on that level. And they are disqualifying themselves by their attitude, especially. And by their attitude in, in, in connection to change. 
If they don't want to change, they will not move forward. But the world will move forward. But they will just be, be stuck where they are. And it's their own choice. And sometimes we just have to love them, but we love them from a distance. So that, that, that has been my experience. Yeah, I, I, I like what you're saying because sometimes people don't want change, but then because they're, they're fighting change, it's never easy. Change is not easy. We, we, we know that. But when you're being stretched, of course, you've got to move forward. But people who do not want change and they stay at the same level, then they start complaining about it. Yeah. Not knowing that it's in their hands to to do that, you just say this, and I remember um, Dr. Ladonna. She she preached a very interesting teaching. I can't remember the name of it, but she gave a very good example of someone, uh, people at a construction site who they used to go to a construction site, and then after during lunch hour they would sit and eat by themselves, and everybody used to bring their lunch. So on this day, there's a particular day, one of the, one of the workers opened his lunch Tupperware and goes like, oh my God, a, a bologna sandwich again. I hate bologna sandwiches. So then one of the guys tells him, why don't you tell your wife to make you another one? He said, I don't have a wife. I made it myself. <laughs> so you see, <laughs> the, the moral of the story here is sometimes we mix up that mess. So uh -huh. it's for, if, you, if you don't like that bologna sandwich, change it. Do something, something about something it. Else. Yes. Do something about yes. it. Yes. He's complaining ab about a sandwich he doesn't like, which he made himself, <laughs> which he made the previous day. So if he yeah. wants change, he's going to change it. Yeah. So it, it's actually yeah. resonates with what you're saying right now. Excellent point. What do you think, Anna? Me. <laughs> um, I would say yes. Um, yeah, I think in the church, um, when it comes to honor, as Pastor Matthew mentioned, it 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 it, it um, people don't really take it seriously. But I think it's time that, um, yeah, I think it's time that people start to think about it and put it into practice these days worldwide. Because I remember, like when we used to go to church earlier before the COVID started, like um. Especially, um, yeah. Especially even to, to start the service on time, and even even dressing up as well. And because I always used to just invite to tell myself, like, I'm, I'm, since I'm going to, to the father's house, we need to, you know, like to dress properly. And mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of miss that as well. So it's a very good topic. It's um, mm -hmm. it will really help a lot of people just to think about it and yeah put into action yeah yes thank you what about you Anne? it's a good question <laughs> <laughs> regarding protocol and excellence and what your your experience has been yeah um i i i love the point that loves go beyond and uh, and yeah, I am. Uh, I'm grown up in Europe, so um, sometimes I think that yeah, it's important to show up. It's important how we are looking and how we are, you know, presenting ourselves. Um, sometimes there can be such a high focus on it. So yeah, so yeah, I'm learning. Mm. What about you, Pharaoh? Well, very, uh, very learning evening. Uh, excellency is is, uh, is 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 main main uh, main issue. Uh, I, I learned a, a lot of things this evening, and and it's right what you said about uh, the, the, the protocol in. Uh, in church and, and I recognize by myself too that we are very fo uh, often focused are focused on friendship more than on uh, on, uh, on, on on the pr protocol of honoring 
honoring uh, leaders and so on. Uh, I, I do honor leaders, of course, but uh, often we are measuring the, uh, how it's uh, doing in the church yeah, uh, by, uh, by uh, the experience of, of uh, some friendship. And, and that's not always the right thing. So I, I, I do, uh, uh, I don't know the right word in English. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I agree, I agree with, with what you said about it, especially about Europe. Hmm. So I, I, for sure, I have to listen it uh, another time and maybe uh, a, a third time and a fourth time <laughs> all, all what is said this evening I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed by it and, and uh, I have to say it's since since few weeks I'm uh, every Tuesday here and it's already a, a, a point in my agenda so I'm looking forward to the other the other meetings, but <laughs> this this time I I I, I need to, to listen it uh, several times again to learn about all that is said, all the points. It's it's not like we here in our church, so it's 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 more than than we learn uh, normally in the church, in our church. I, I'm, I'm very blessed by it. Thank God. Yes, I, I have the same experience, of course, coming from Europe, that we don't really understand, for the most part, most mm. churches don't really practice protocol and excellence because they think, mm. well, you know, we're all on the same level. But of course we're not, and we shouldn't be, because when you are on the same level, you cannot help anybody else, yeah. you know? That's right. So you can only help if you're at, at above yeah. someone else. So, um, yeah. So that's what it is. It's not you placing yourself above others, but God does think in hierarchy. And that mm. God does, if you, look at, if, if you look at the Bible, God mm. does put people above us and also below us, mm. depending on where we are, because that's, that's how we can help. I mean, if you are both in the same mess, how can you help each other? You can only help someone when you are not in the same mess. <laughs> you are, you know, yeah. someone is drowning. Someone is drowning in a in a swamp or something. You know, you cannot help someone if you are in the same swamp. If you are on the other, or if you are on the bank of the swamp, and of course you mm -hmm. can reach out and pull the person out. But that's, you know, that's what people need to understand. It's not self-serving, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, having the hierarchy is number one, it's godly. Number two, it's a kingdom principle. Number three, of course, it's a heavenly principle, but it's also mm. put in place for our sake. Mm. Because, you know, as we just discussed, you cannot help on the same level with the same people because they will not look up to you to help them. They just want mm -hmm. to talk. They just want to share their misery and co-miserate. Well, co-miserate and pity party doesn't help anyone. That's, that's sure. why it's set in place that you would have people above you who you learn from and who help you in your walk. And of course, you have below, people below you that you can help and mentor. Yeah. So it's not self-serving. And it's a godly order. And, if, and I'm mm. convinced that if people understand that at some point, then they will catch up to it. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, Ning. Ning just joined us. Wonderful. <laughs> Ning. I think, I think Anne wanted to say something, to ask something. Sure. Yeah, it's just, I was, uh, I was thinking after I said something before, and I think what is the key to make excellence and protocol become real is when it's born with revelation, when it's born with the revelation of who we are, because then it comes from the inside. 
and then it comes inside out because sometimes when it's like if it's performance or perfectionism then it's just something else to add but when we realize who we really are then it's fun and then it comes inside out and i think that's that's a huge um, motivation at least for me yeah yeah that's Better true and because oh, sorry. yeah sorry yeah that's yeah. true and because uh, like if you if you notice very well your point is actually 100% what actually mom and dad always teach us three things about your identity dignity and destiny and that's why these three things mom and dad always emphasize them quite a lot because unless you know who you are you behave contrary to it Mm-hmm. You see, like, like the prodigal son, if he knew his royal reign, if he knew his family, was, he would not have gone to just scatter himself and be eating the pig then, you know, but he lost his identity. So identity, like you say, and plays a very, very big role. And then dignity, you'll be able to hold your dignity by operating in excellence. And mostly the reason why mom and dad also teach this to us constantly one way or another either direct mentorship how dad does it with me and other people or even just with the teaching and daily boost and, and wisdom is is because you cannot expect from people what you have not taught them yeah yeah you cannot expect from people what you not taught them and that's why they will repeat it here and there so that the people coming in or sometimes you know sometimes it's good to get reminders because i mean let's face it sometimes someone can forget about something and get when then something is taught to you again, then you remember. So yeah, those three things, identity, dignity, and destiny, yeah. Go ahead, Princess Rika. I was just, I was just going to greet Ning. Can you hear us there? Oh. Yeah, cause she was, um, she, oh, um, I have her no audio. Oh, she's not, her and, uh, audio is not connected. And I, and she was, she was asking, yeah, she was asking for the link. So I sent the link to her and then I saw that she's here, but then doesn't seem to. Uh... Yeah, because her, her audio. Connecting the audio. Someone... Okay, now she's connected. Uh, yes. so hopefully she will be able to talk. Uh, there she is. Yeah. But can you unmute yourself, Ning? Okay, maybe someday she will. Anyway, yeah, I, w- I, was, just, I was just reminded of a story that uh, someone was saying, a minister was saying that uh, she ha- uh, he had this experience with someone who just got saved. And, and before the person got saved, because uh, I would just, I'm just reflecting to what um, Anne was saying regarding it has to come from the side. Yes, uh, God is the God of order. And even without this particular person or minister teaching on order, this, this person just got saved. And before he got saved, he was absolutely messy very messy and no one taught him on on you know you have to be you know putting your things together and just live a proper neat and tidy life no one had to tell him but the holy spirit convinced him and the bible says the holy spirit convinces us on and leads us into all truth there are a lot of aspects of truth and one of the things that of course uh pastor marjorie touched on is, is our dignity and uh a person who respects himself or herself doesn't live in a fixed sign everything around you has to be beautified because this is how the holy spirit feels home in you and he doesn't feel home in you if you are living in a disorderly uh things all over the place house and this person as soon as he got home from the from the meeting that he just got saved he went home and he felt absolutely sick about being, you know, such unruly, you know, in terms of his uh, things were all over the place, not neatly packed and just everything was just absolutely all over the place. And for many years, he was living this way and no one told him, no one confronted him on this. And he felt perfectly fine at home because that's the way he always lived. But when he got home with the Holy Spirit inside him now, the Holy Spirit inside him felt uncomfortable and therefore he felt uncomfortable and he just couldn't rest until he tidied everything up cleaned the whole house and now he's living a very tidy and very normal life but um it's just just just, uh, reflecting on what you said and that it has to come from inside but i really believe that when you 
respect yourself and you know that you are you know about your dignity there's no way that you will present yourself as a homeless you will not walk in a rag because you know that you are a prince or a princess <laughs> so yes it is coming from the inside out and it's not a show we put on of course but it's something that we represent because this is how we feel and you can very much see that people who just got saved it's a transition for them for some it's an immediate transition like this gentleman i just said i just referred to but to some people it's a transition and that's why it's good to look around with the you know among the old christians you know old in terms of got saved long time ago or long time before you have and learn from them even even if they don't say anything, just by the way they present yourself, you begin to present yourself the same way. You will use the same terminology, you will use the same words, you will uh, represent yourself, you will, you will uh, dress up when you come to church. Even when you came to church and got saved, you were wearing jeans and, you know, I'm not saying jeans is bad, I'm just saying like, you know, something that would be like a dress down or would be considered dress down. Uh, but then, you know, as you look around and you feel like, you know what, everyone's so dressed up so properly and so wonderfully. I want to dress that way too. And then next Sunday or next Wednesday or whenever it is, you also dress up and you feel better because inside something has changed. So really, you're absolutely right. And we are looking forward to that change so much, not the outward, but the inside, inside change. And that's something that we project on the outside. So absolutely, it has to come from the inside. I agree. I'm yielding the floor. <laughs> Whoever wants to talk. Do we have Ning? Ning in the house? Yes. <gasps> She's unmuting for some. Oh, yeah. My Ning, I love you. <laughs> I'm so I love you too. Us. So as I said to you as well, this is a reoccurring meeting. The link is always going to be the same. So just save it and click on it. And then every week you can join us on time. Thank you. Lovely. What do you think about excellence and protocol? Oh, question for me? Yes. <laughs> we are discussing the <laughs> Pastor Marjorie's teaching. She was, she was kind enough to teach us an excellence and protocol in the church and in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, as excellence is a determination, we always strive for better because it can you always room for better. Um, so never, never um, be comfortable with where you are. Always um, look for something. Uh, you know, look for new knowledge, uh, new information, new uh, ways. Like you said, you see someone that does something better than you. You you ask. You know, never, never feel like you have arrived. Always um, think that you can get better. That's my take on that. Excellent point. You're always striving for, striving for, for being bigger, better, faster, more. Yeah, don't buy into what the world is telling you. Uh, you know, your certain age or your certain. Uh, stage that you you know now you have to just retire and wait no no matter Never. how no matter how the thing is we're all babies in God's eyes we're all babies God is unlimited so always look for his standard not ours absolutely Anybody else? I'm taking notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to get tips on your outfit, both of you, Pastor Marjorie and uh, Princess Rika. <laughs> Look beautiful. Tips on what exactly? Thank you. <laughs> what do you want to have the tips? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Tips on, on what? On your outfit, your fashion. <laughs> Oh, what fashion? Which fashion are you looking for? Oh, both of you. You both look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we wanted to represent heaven also today. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's important because uh, uh, 
you, you probably haven't he heard the whole teaching, but basically we were discussing that the way we present ourselves is the way people will receive us. So it's, 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 it's something that I personally don't feel necessarily good in dress down pose, but also because of who I represent and because of the people I'm going to meet with, even if it's online, I want to, or even when I go to the gym, you know, I put on my makeup. So I don't, I don't say that everybody has to, but, but this is just for me. And it, I have always been this way. And I used to be a trainer in my, in my early twenties. And uh, I had a wonderful uh, uh, aerobics trainer who trained me to be a trainer. And uh, she always wore makeup. She was from California. And she told me that always wear makeup when you train people because when you look into the mirror, you want to see a beautiful face, a made up face. She was non Christian, but I mean, nevertheless, as I said, we learn from everyone that, you know, whomever we can learn from. So this has been my standard that when I look into the mirror, I do it for myself, you know. When I look into the mirror, of course, we work with mirrors in the, in the training room. And, uh, and that's important because we, we make adjustments in our, in our exercise and you, this is how you can control yourself. I did a lot of ballet and dancing and things like that. And I, I'm very much used to mirrors because that's how you can control yourself and you, know, you can uh, adjust your movement. So it's important. But nevertheless, of course, that involves your face because every time you look into the mirror, you look at, you know, to adjust your uh, uh, movement and posture, you will see your face. So I have to look in a way that I like to see myself. If I don't, if I feel like I'm pale or whatever, I don't feel good, you know? So I do it for me. Others may put on makeup for others, but I don't care. I do it for me. <laughs> so oh, that man. goes for the gym. That goes for the gym. Oh, but when I go to meet with, with uh, people, of course, I, I respect them and I honor them also with the way I present myself. So that's one of the other aspects. Yeah, good stuff. You know, um, growing up in a communist country, we were taught to be plain, <laughs> to use uh, as little colors as possible. So if we can have a training on that, it'll be great. Love to learn more. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, trust me, Ning, can I tell you something? You are actually in the right place. I really hope you're going to Nairobi and you'll transit through Dubai. Because you know what? Actually, Anna is a makeup artist. Oh, really? Anna, You're Anna. Anna. Oh, 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 she okay. is. Yeah, she's really she's happy to see her face. <laughs> you always hide her face. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I would definitely need a class. Oh, so wow. I had a. I had a Christina in my house uh, last weekend because she came to Washington, D.C. to get her passport. Um, uh -huh. She wanted to get passport for um, Burundi and DCR, but yeah. DRC, sorry, it didn't work out, but yeah. she wanted to have her passport in her hand so she can get the visa for uh, Kenya, right? Um, uh -huh. So she was in my house and I was, I really admire her because she was, she, she talks about, you know, the, the uh, advocates eating and she keeps referring to Princess Rika's like uh, book booklet. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm that? using my I fingers. I don't even <laughs> think I know this person, but then they, she heard about my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to like discuss about you know where to put our fork where knife um I'm like I was like oh wow you're very conscious every single you know I, I don't even think about it and but she said that because we're going to meet a dignitary we're going to meet you know presidents um uh kings and queens so it's necessary that we present excellence so it's just wonderful to have you know uh people you know the brothers and sisters remind you you know so you're always uh, surrounded by your atmosphere the environment mm -hmm. um that reminds you to always strive for excellence absolutely yeah. Yes, I, I uh, was just um, spending some time on um, a Zoom call with Pastor Lizzie from uh, Nigeria. No, what are these places? 
and uh, and uh, she also mentioned that she wants to <laughs> she wants to have my training. So really, it's like every day I'm getting this. Everybody has this, has wants to have the uh, royal grace and arrest. So I have to. Put yeah, it I asked you about and it I as well. To, yeah, <laughs> I know. Mean, it's like I'm. It's like I think God is trying to tell me something. So yeah, I have to put this together. And uh, obviously, we will probably have a, whole, a, a several meeting on Zoom because of how else we can we do all this with all the people being in different countries. But uh, I will have to work it out because uh, this training that I did um, in many countries, in fact, uh, are very much hands-on training, very much. Uh, I, I like practical things because I believe that's what you really mm -hmm. are here for, to learn practical things in, that, in this aspect. So I don't know how to, I, I'm not sure how to do it online, but because you have to practice a lot of things. So we, I have to work out how we, we can do it, uh, uh, you know, online. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's the other, because it's not a teaching, teaching per se, but something that's practical. And how to do it online, I have to figure that out. So we, we'll just have to see. And obviously I will have to see everybody. So then Anna, you cannot hide anymore. <laughs> 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 Oh everybody has to see everybody, you know. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. We always had a lot of fun. So, uh, how did this Christina hear heard about me? I don't think I, I even met her. So it seems like uh, I think I think he heard uh, about you through Pastor David. Okay. Um, yeah, that, so I, well, Pastor David, I also never met, but I understand this as for people hear about me. But how does she know about my classes whom, that she never participated in? So it's like. <laughs> I think um, there so you funny. have a uh, training, right? You have training menu at the at the uh, Christ Love, um, you know, in the library. Um, I don't then know, I Pastor David, because I didn't Pastor, know. Yeah. I didn't know I had Pastor, that. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, the, <laughs> there. Yeah, there's the really? the etiquette. I, I last time I learned how to sit, but you know, I'm just saying because no, um, she she I remind me. Of, Every single minute, and I feel so bad because I was eating my chicken with my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Being American, <laughs> I must say that anything that has wings, you can eat it with your hands. That's the rule. That's for free. That's, for free. That's okay. With wings, you can eat. The wingy thing is you can eat with, with your hands. And the other thing you can eat with your hand is the ribs. The ribs, okay. yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> you, thank you. And the and the and these and the hot dogs. The hot dogs you can you can take with your hand. Also, we have in, in Hungary we take the hot dogs with our hands and just bite oh, it. It's I normal. feel much relieved. You don't have to yeah. cut it with your thing, so it's okay. I feel very relieved. Oh. <laughs> You're too funny. <laughs> You're too funny. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> I really enjoy this fellowship. We should do it often. Yeah, because yeah, I, was, I was talking to Pastor Marjorie that before we should have like a, I'm not saying teach such a session because I don't want to put this down, but just to build a fellowship because I think a lot of people have a lot, a lot of things to say. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say, you know, even with, that, with your own life, you know, whatever you experience or prayer requests or something. So it's like, you know, we don't want to just present a teaching, but we want to, you know, nurture a community sort of thing. Right. Okay. I, I yield the floor to whomever wants to take it. Okay. Let me see if there's anybody else. I think Anna, Anna wants to say something. No, okay. I just want to ask about um, since you spoke about um, etiquette with with food, Chris, like, what about uh, uh, eating uh, pasta spaghetti? Do you use the because a lot of I've seen yeah, okay. yeah when you eat a spaghetti, do you use the fork or you just you can use a spoon as well? Okay, well it's you can do it both ways. I it's more proper to use the you know I would have to I have to bring the cutlery. See that's what I'm saying. It's a really hands-on training. So now that we don't have, we just kind of have to um, um, imagine. So here's the fork and here's the thing. Here's the um, the spoon. Yeah, the so spoon. Okay. It's more proper to do it this way. 
but you can also mm -hmm. use your your fork just the fork just a fork okay all right it's more elegant to use both fork and spoon but there's no rule against using only the fork for example <laughs> ah okay all right Good. because the italians say you have to use only the fork so that's why i was like fork definitely use whether or not you want to use the spoon as well that's a different story but also uh italians are not exactly known of their protocol they just do whatever they want and they want the okay fork. i love them <laughs> but if you want to be very proper then you might want to learn from the british okay. or those who are experts in this they don't have to come from britain necessarily but Brits are very much proper and they very much uh, in, you know, in tune with whatever is proper. Okay. It's All right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. I should let you go and get back to my work. And uh, okay. it's- Okay, what I will do, what I will do then, I will just close with the, what do you call this? With the, with the, with the Titan offering. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. So we would like okay one scripture for Titan offer. Let me find one quickly. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse seven, and it says, "Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver." I read that again. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Mom as well covered this a little bit during her teaching on Sunday. Like God loves a cheerful giver when you give it out of your heart, not begrudgingly, because it also helps you on the other end as well. You have that fulfilling, that that great feeling that you have done something and you have partnered with God, and it's not like something is living out of your hand. It's only going to your future as the seed that you're planting. That's why we call it seeds. Yes, our website shows donate, but it's it's not donated just because that is what. We had to work with on the website and have that donate button. But in essence, you are sowing seeds and you're partnering with God and you are partnering, especially with the mission which is carrying on right now. There's been tremendous, tremendous, tremendous testimonies, miracles, leadership meetings, pastors transformed over 500 pastors have been transformed on a great meeting today. And it's carrying on. And this was all made possible by you all online and even on the Zoom meeting, partnering together with us. So we'd like to welcome you back to again, just continue partnering with us because you're partnering with God all for a good cause. And when the harvest comes in, we all enjoy it as a family. So give with a cheerful heart, whatever the Holy Spirit gives and to ministers to your heart to give, not degradingly or under compulsion, but what you feel is right for you to do. So I will just put up the, where is it? Yes, the paper. Yes, there we are. So you can do it on paper. Go to paper.me forward slash Charles and Lifon, and or you can go as well to. Like I said earlier, on on Christlab.org and click on the donate button. Uh, the cash app is the dollar sign, Charles and Biffon. And Venmo is the at sign, Dr. Charles hyphen and Biffon. And you can sow your seeds there. Remember, nothing is leaving your hand, it's only going into your future. And your partner in God, your partner is God, you're part of an eternal purpose on this earth. And final reminder, Power School of Miracles, please do register at psom.org, register, invite people. There's, there's still a lot of time that you can, you can do this. And if you can make arrangements, if you're within the US or you can actually travel to the local location and be there, please do so. Make arrangements early enough or you can always, we have joining online and we'll let you know how to go about it as well, right? Fantastic. So, and, I'll hand over back to you, Princess Rika. Thank you very much, Pastor. It was fun. And we'll see you guys next week, if not before. And God bless you all. Thank you for participating. And call more people and invite them to join us because it's fun. And we all learn and we are all the better for it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Marjorie, for the excellent teaching. And we Thank will be posting, of course, on our YouTube channel as well. 
Thank you, everyone, for coming in. It was great. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Thank great. you. God bless you. Love, Love you. you. Bye. 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 Love you all. Bye-bye.